Yes, they, they were asked about their comments <coughs> from the desk. And then, um, were they, uh, did the state patrol take them out? How, how were it? No. No. They had, they had boxes available to them, and however long it took them to clear out their personal possessions, they took. Some people took longer than others. Okay. That wasn't my understanding. I understood that, it, they, didn't, that it, they didn't have it done. They had, were they shut out of their computers and their phones? Well, the computers were, computer service was terminated at the beginning of the meeting, which is standard practice. Right. At our last meeting, we had um, a chicken, kind of a chicken scratch document that was presented to us. Was that a your handwriting? This one? I would have to see it. Essentially, this was a high-level rough estimate of the savings, potential savings related to um, the staff layout. Okay, so point you, of order. Can I get a copy of that, please? Sure. Oh, I think we passed them out at the last meeting. Are you available? there's one. Thank you, no, I don't think any of us got Was the house in that last meeting? Uh uh. I don't think we were. Oh, okay. No, we wouldn't have been oh, in the house. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah. Well, you know what? We'll wait on that. Um, I'm going to until everyone has a copy of it. Carlson, you had, do you have any um, role in recruiting the new staff to take over in the reorganization process? No. You aren't involved in recruiting anyone? Do either of you have any involvement in the um, removal of the budget, all of the budget rules from the Department of Administrative Services? Uh, no, sir. That was, uh, that was not a part of the GSD. So, Doug, I think these questions are for you, but um, Paul, if I've got them directed to the wrong person, can jump in. Um, who made the decision to classify the new three hires as um, executive officer threes? That would have been a determination through our typical policy utilizing human resources. Okay, so do you go to human resources and let them know that these people coming on board wanted to be paid more than the people that we were taking out of their pools? Uh, no, ma'am, that wouldn't have been the process. The process would have been to establish a job description for those individuals and then to go through typical policy and process, which is to classify them. Okay. So these three new people were brought in as bureau chiefs without bureaus to chief. Um, how did that happen? The recommendation was to bring them in as bureau chiefs, uh, as the EO3s, which is a state classification. It was later determined uh, through human resources that that wasn't an appropriate classification, and they were then later moved to s s senior resource officers. So they were brought in at the very top of that pay scale for bureau chief, and you're saying someone in human resources had made that decision? Who would have worked closely with human okay. resources? So who, who was the person that made that decision? Uh, I'm not certain. I know that there's various individuals uh, within HR that would work with us on that. So I'm not certain if there is one particular individual or not. It's, it's a process that we follow when we hire staff at any level of any classification. We always work through a process. But well, wouldn't an HR person know if they don't have any bureau to supervise that like, they shouldn't be brought in as a bureau chief? Uh, perhaps. Uh, perhaps. Not one to comment on that. So, like, who specifically worked on these three positions at HR? Uh, I'm not not aware of who did at the time. I just know that that was where the classification came. 
I'm not certain if it was someone within the organization or if it was a uh, personnel officer, I'm not certain. So then, then I realized, whoops, this is, this is not the right classification for these folks. Um, we need to change their classification, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And was, was, the, um, was there a change in pay that came along with that? Did the, pay, did the pay go down for these three persons once they realized that they weren't in the bureau chief club? Uh, not to my knowledge, the pay, the pay was not altered. They got to keep the same high pay. Uh, they received the same pay that they entered the positions with, even yeah. though it was reclassified. So, okay, so they get they get bureau bureau chief pay without being bureau chief. Okay. I don't believe that the pay was destined on the bureau chief. I believe it was on a classification. Okay. Again, I'm sort of a specialist with human resources, but that was my understanding. Okay. Um, well, the whole way of doing business. They had construction and design engineers were called project managers, correct? Um, now, these senior resource managers, uh, they are being listed on your website as project managers. Explain the difference between the two roles of how we, how we handle, handle construction projects before <coughs> and now with the new, the new role. Sure, previously uh, our, our state staff actually were construction managers that were managing the construction process using general contractors uh, under the new methodology that we're currently practicing and having great success with. Uh, they were simply representing owners, which would be the state of Iowa, independent or particular agencies <coughs> throughout the state, representing their needs, and we're relying on business partners who are construction management firms to actually manage the construction process working with multiple prime contractors as opposed to a general contractor. And then how do, how do you put this new model in place? Do you have advisors in figuring out how to transition from, um, you know, what I call the old model where um, the staff we had in place had engineering expertise in a variety of areas and they really were the watchdog for taxpayers. So now we've got this new model where we're bringing in kind of the private sector to maybe fulfill that role. Who, who advised you on putting together this new model of doing business? It's actually one of the best practices in the industry, and so it wasn't anything that was unique or an anomaly for the state of Iowa. It was something that's practiced in many, many public and private sector construction models. Do you have an idea of how much we've, we've been paying the um, groups that have come in to do the work that was previously, been, previously handled? I certainly don't have files with me, but um, I, I've been privy to that information in the past. Did Master Builders advise you at all on the new model? Uh, not to my knowledge. They did not advise me. No. Master Builders had no involvement in the reorganizing of, of DAS? Not to, not to the way that it was reorganized for me. No. Okay. All right. Does everyone have a copy of the Mm -hmm. All right. All right, Mr. Carlson, we're ready for you. Walk us through this. Okay. <clears throat> Essentially, this was a very rough, high-level estimate of savings associated with the reorganization. So what you see on the top is the, the cost of the staff that was retained. The next figure is... So the next two figures are a sum of the costs that we were incurring at the time. And if you subtract <coughs> the cost we were incurring at the time from the cost we're retaining, the difference is potential savings. Okay, maybe walk us through with the numbers so we understand. This is kind of hard to read here. Okay. If you, if you look up at the top, you see three SRNs. Identified. You see, you're going to have to be acronym yes. for the rest of the committee. Okay. And there's a PSE4, an EO1, and an EO2. And they are? Who are these people? Because we don't know acronyms. You're going to have to help the committee and the audience out there. Okay. As I recall, the, the PSE4 was 
somebody that that was going to be in the organization and involved with, with what the SRMs are doing. The executive officer won, I believe that was a position that was already there and occupied. And the executive officer too, I don't I don't recall. But the the total cost of all those positions was projected to be six hundred and ninety one thousand dollars. Are these the new people? I'm a little confused. Are these the new people yes. that you're hiring? Yes. The 691000 was the projected cost afterwards, after the reorganization. And the numbers of 1112000 were the were the projected costs prior to that. And the difference between the two was six. The difference between what the initial cost was, what the, what the initial cost was projected to be, and what post reorganization, what that, that cost was projected to be. The difference between the two would be estimated savings. So all of these, um, in this kind of second group, grouping here, are these all the people that you laid off? Yes. Is that, those were all of the layoffs? Yes. I think it might be better, I might, I'm sure, if they could put together something they could print it out without acronyms on that, give us a little more detail. We can go through it, obviously, but it may help us all understand it a little bit better and move forward. I think that's a great idea. Thank you, Representative County. Maybe uh, you could get something back to the committee. I know this is what uh, um, one of the former employees received as the reorganization plan through a request for information. So that would be helpful. Do you think you could get that to us? Um, yes. Get this week? Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Carlson, have you been responsible for writing any RFPs for Department of Administrative Services? Responsible for writing? Yes. I've been responsible for assembling them based upon input from other parties, but not solely responsible for developing the technical details associated with the RFP. Were you responsible for the RFP for the construction management services? The, um, the CEM RFP was assembled by the um, DAS procurement and it was issued and responses came to me and they always come in in a sealed envelope. I received the responses and passed them on to um, GSC for review, analysis, and award. So those did come in through the purchasing department? As I would, well, the purchasing department issued them, and I believe they were returned to my attention as I would. I know at some point I received them all and then passed them on for review. I was not involved in the review process. You were not involved in review. Isn't it typical procedure that uh, when they come back in through purchasing so that the checks and balances of those um, that would meet the, meet the requirements? I don't recall specifically what process was followed. They could have come to purchasing and then purchasing passed them on to me. I don't know. I believe it said that they needed to come back to you. And I'm just curious, is there a way for us to track to make sure that those went through the proper steps before coming straight back to you? How would, how would the committee find that out? I think if you contact as procurement, they can tell you they ask what, what procedures are permitted. Was this um, RFP posted, advertised? How, how, how were people notified about this? I, I believe it was posted through the normal procurement process. And did you have any pre-proposal meetings on these? Not that I was involved in. So are you saying that you did 
did not write that RFP? Who was, who was involved in is, writing that RFP? Is your question, did I author the RFP? Did you write the RFP? No. Were you involved in writing the RFP? I don't believe I was, but I don't recall specifically. How would we track who was responsible for writing the RFP for the construction okay. management services? Yeah. We could certainly uh, give you all of our files and the information that we would have pertaining to that process. Would they have like like eating notices where you could just look it up for us and let us know who was involved in the RFP? They may have had with, with many RFPs or RFBs uh, to put them into form to put them out for actual bid or for, for proposal. Typically there's some boilerplate language. There's some cut and paste from other RFPs. Sometimes we do comparisons with what other states have done. Sometimes you use industry practice. So as opposed to one person actually authoring that word for word, that typically doesn't happen. It's typically a process where there's lots of information compiled into one document. All right, that's what caused some concerns. I know in the past it was like a team of people and they all had a chance to work together around the RFP and it went through a number of checks and balances and the period sure. this one didn't have that same checks and balances. Um, and it also didn't have an issue date on it. Aren't all RFPs issued from the state? Don't they all have an issue date? They would typically have an issue date, I believe, for policy, and we would be able to identify when those were issued. Okay. <coughs> Do you know why this one was missing an issue date? No, ma'am, I'm not certain. Do you know why it was missing no. an issue date? Do you know how many proposals you received? No, not offhand, I do not, but we would certainly have that in our files. And then who was involved in the evaluation of these? The actual, is this for the CMA? Right, or just for, the, for the uh, construction management services group. So sure, right. sure. Who was involved in the, the, score, the scoring of the uh, CMA responses, I believe, were combination of the three individuals in the design and construction area, which would have been Evan Hagen, Frank Carr, and Calvin Miller. I would want to verify that, but that's, that's if I recollect correctly, those are the three individuals involved. And then who, who would be the person that would sign those agreements? It could have been myself, it could have been, in, in our structure at the time, I don't recall who would have signed those agreements. Carlson, I'm a little bit confused on some dates. Did you say that you started in 2012? I started in the position I'm currently holding, and I believe it was 2012. Okay, but you, what position did you hold prior to that? I was an administrator in the design and construction area. Okay, well that uh, makes more sense then. Uh, so as in that position, then the RFPs and the reduction in force and everything was moving with you uh, being one of the players. Because when you explained what job you did now, it didn't really make sense. But as as, as far as the new business model is concerned, my involvement was limited to providing layoff notices to the employees. Okay, was uh, Carol Frank the employee that was in charge of the veterans home? No. Okay, who, uh, which project manager was in charge of the veterans home? At that time, I believe it was a person by the name of Gary Forshee. Okay. <clears throat> he was one of them that uh, was laid off, right? Correct. Um, well, that makes more sense. Let's see. That's all I have. Thank you.